Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. I hope you're having a wonderful day. You're listening to or watching the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Tersh Blissett. Today, we have Stephen Dale with uh, Power Selling Pros on the show. And we're going to talk about, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a touchy subject. Uh, it's one that's obviously passionate. Uh, I'm passionate about, uh, Stephen's passionate about. And that is, um, should we be placing that individual who is our lowest paid employee uh should that be our gatekeeper should that be the person who makes the largest impact on our client base whenever they make that first impression you ne- you can never make an, a second first impression um so with that being said welcome to the show steven man thank you so much tersh uh happy to be here happy to be a part of service business mastery uh you know one of my favorite things when i'm when I took a look at your podcast and, and kind of stalked you online, uh, by the way, awesome podcast, great organization. Uh, you had this phrase on there that talks about people over profits. Yep. Uh, and I, I that really just resounded with me because really your people, that is your greatest asset. Um, it's about your people because ultimately that is your brand. And, and so thinking about this, concept of, you know, the person that's the lowest paid on the totem pole, the person that receives, you know, the least amount of training. And yet that's the person that is most responsible of taking that lead and turning it over into a set appointment. Um, And you're right, Tersh, they're usually the lowest paid. They're usually the lowest trained. They they don't receive much training. And, And so as a contractor myself for many years, I was very guilty of this, uh, just all transparency. You know, we would spend an enormous amount of time training our technicians, ride-alongs, objection calls, role play. Uh, We'd send them out to training. And yet when it came time for me to train my CSR, right, the voice of the company, (laughs) basically my training was like this. Hey, answer the phone. How hard is that? Here's your script. (laughs) Uh, Just read it. And then they end up sounding like but yeah, yeah, and you'll be fine. Um, but what you realize is most companies spend an enormous amount of money, PPC, SEO, to get the phone to ring, right? You know, what does it cost just alone to get the phone to mm-hmm. ring? And we don't spend any time training that voice. We may train them on a CRM or, like you said, a script. But ultimately, they are truly the voice of the company. And using that term, you say of a gatekeeper, but they have the power to determine whether the customer says, yes, no, I'll call someone else. You're too high or I don't know. Um, and so what what really gets me is and again, I was very guilty of this. Uh, and matter of fact, uh, when I started. Uh, so I've been in the industry for 22 years and um uh, a few years back uh, before I came on board with Power Selling Pros, uh, again, that was my training style. Answer the phone. How hard is that? And, and I took a class with Power Selling Pros. We started this coaching program, and it was truly a game changer because immediately my paradigm shift to realize they are the voice of the mm-hmm. company. Wow, they, you know, that's it. It all starts right there whether the customer is going to have a great experience, a bad one, whether they say yes or no and move forward. So we started doing training uh, and it was a really eye opener to me. Um, And and so a few months later, I saw the owner of the company, Brigham Dickinson, at an event. And I said, Brigham, I just got to tell you, man, you completely changed our culture. Now, we were a great company, but what he did was he turned us into an awesome company. Uh, Because truly, I believe that great is not good enough. You've got to go above and beyond. You have to be different. And the company that will win today is the company that's going to win on the experience they provide. Mm -hmm. Um, You're in the uh, in Georgia area. You know, I always like to say, uh, what if uh, Chick-fil-A ran an HVAC company? What would that look like? (laughs) Yeah, that's it's, it's funny you mentioned that we had a review uh, I think it was last month that uh, they were like, uh, she said that uh, Service Emperor was the Chick fil A of the service industry. I was like, wow. Oh my goodness, dude, that is a game changer. Someone dropped the mic right there, or at least drop a nut driver, either one. Um, 
Dude, that is, but see, that's the goal. That is what you intentionally have designed to serve your customer. So, so here's the question I'll pose for those listeners out there. When was the last time you had a service uh, team meeting with all your technicians, you brought in donuts. Let me ask you this. What did you do with those leftover donuts? Tell me the truth. I'll tell you what you did. You took those leftover donuts, you took them down to your CSRs and you said, hey, CSRs, here's some donuts Mm -hmm. for you. Now, what is the message you're giving those CSRs with leftover donuts? They're second best. Okay. So if that's the message I'm giving them, why would they step up and fight for that customer? You know, I mean, that's the difference between a job and a career. I'm stuck here answering phones all day long with some crazy customers. Mm. The, the, the least we could do in our responsibility is let's coach them. Let's train them. Let's listen to some calls together and let's develop intentionally. How do we want our customer to feel when they call into us? What is that going to look like? Um, so with, with, you know, that being said, with, yeah. with that being said, with that being said, um, do you have them listen to all of their own calls to classify them? Or is that something like for me, I feel like if someone listens, I, I hate listening to myself. I, I don't, I don't even like listening to my own self when I'm editing podcasts. Like it, it's like everybody just is, you cringe when you hear yourself, especially when you're like, oh, I should not have said that. Or man, I sounded crazy when I said that. And and that's, I hear myself all the time. I'm like, man, I shouldn't have said that, but I'm not editing it out. I'm just going to leave it in there. Uh, but it's, <laughs> it's one of those things whenever I feel like when a CSR listens to themselves on a recording and they have to um, kind of um, grade themselves or say, should okay, you have five different recordings here. Show me five things that you need to improve on. Then they're more self-aware. They're more con- self-conscious about what they say and when they say it. Um, and then how long that people don't realize how long the pause is for when they're searching through their stuff. Is, is that something that you feel like you see on your end? Yeah, a- a- absolutely. Uh, you don't know what you don't know, you know, it, and it's, when you look at any great uh, athlete or a great NFL team, um, we'll probably mention the Dallas Cowboys because I live in Dallas, but um, I know some of y'all are just don't turn the podcast off just because I mentioned that. But my point is, if you watch any great uh, athletic team, like especially NFL, the moment they're coming off the field, they're looking at that surface tablet. They're looking at their last play. They're making adjustments right there on the fly. So truly, If you were to just listen to four to five calls a month, and when I listen to calls together, I say, okay, great, Tersh, let's listen to this call together. And tell me when you listen to it, what did you like? And then maybe what did you not like? And then let's just kind of see what happened. Because what what really happens is you start to go, wow, man, I, I sound like that, or I use the word okay, or um, or I listened to a call yesterday. They put someone on hold. And there was no hold music. I thought the call had dropped and it was only 40 something seconds of hold, but it felt like an eternity. Mm -hmm. So that was a great conversation of, Hey, first of all, maybe you guys should have some nice hold music, something. (laughs) And then we had a conversation about hold protocol, right? Um, So really because you don't know what you don't know, when you start listening to your call, and this isn't for me to critique you and say, oh, this is what you did terrible. It's for me to ask you, find one thing you really like, and then find another thing that maybe you didn't like that we could work on. And so maybe you like a certain greeting, but maybe you, you used um too much, or maybe you said, I don't know, or unfortunately, or I'm sorry, you know, worst case is, I asked you for a price up front. You gave me the price and you never got my name. You never built any value. You never even knew why I was calling. Mm. And yet now you just competed on the price up front and the customer said, okay, great. Just calling around. Thank you. Bye-bye. So how do you deal with people who are calling for that 
for just for pricing and because uh, I know I know your process. So that's kind of yeah. like uh, I want you to share with everybody how we do this. Well, yeah, think about it this, Tersh. Are there really any price shoppers? I mean, in today's information world where I can get any and everything online, okay, the fact of the matter is no one is sitting on the couch right now going, hey, man, what do you think it costs for a condenser fan motor? Dude, I don't know, man, but we should start calling around. So, so when you realize, first of all, for someone to reach out to you, especially on, on a phone, okay, um, they have a need, they have a problem, something's going on. So first of all, no one's calling for fun. You know, even the person that says, well, I'm just checking in for a ballpark price, need a price on a three ton system. Look, man, they're calling you for a reason. It is our job to figure out what is the why, what's really going on. So I start by saying, first of all, we need to stop thinking people are price shopping and we need to start changing that paradigm that they are no longer price shopping, but they are solution shopping. They're looking for a solution to that pain point, whatever that is, right? And so they're calling out to you. They're like, hey, 911, we need to be saying help is on the way, right? There is no 912. So first of all, understand people are calling in for a reason. Second of all, I can get a price anywhere. Third of all, it's not always about price, but think of it also. Is it possible that price is the first thing that I'm going to ask because that's the only qualifying question I know mm, to ask? Yeah. What do you guys charge? How much is this? What do you charge for a pound of Freon? Can I get a ballpark price? I think it's a good tensor fan motor. Um, and you know what? Absolutely, Tersh, it possibly could be. My name is Steven. You know, who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Talk to me. What's going on? Why do you think you need refrigerant? So stop thinking of it as a transaction and start looking at it as a connection, an opportunity to talk and communicate with a homeowner that's reaching out to you for help. That's my belief. Mm, that's good stuff there. I, I steady. <laughs> jotting down notes here because uh it, it it really is and i love that you said um you know um the whole gamut of hi my name's steven you know, you know how can i help you it sounds like that could be the issue but let's dive deeper into the into the the situation because it could be that there's uh it, it could be a whole lot of different things when, when we get phone calls because we got constantly get phone calls hey how much does it cost for you to to gas up my system. I have to have it gassed up every year. Mm -hmm. And then instantly it's like, did you know? Then it turns into an education moment where your system's not supposed to be gassed up every year. If it is, then we might have a bigger problem. Would you like for us to, you know, perform a, a no cost leak search on your system? Because, you know, adding that value of, you know, we can come out there and find the leak because it's not supposed to have a leak in the system. And then they're like, wow, I didn't know that. Nobody's ever told me that. They just gas and go, you know. Uh, gas and go. <laughs> oh, what a terrible way to serve a customer, man. Gas and go. Let's roll, baby. During the summertime, it's uh -huh. so common. And, and, and I was talking to Mike McCallowitz about this a while back. And when he was interviewing me for a book that he wrote, he was like, wait a minute, it doesn't make sense. You actually make less money during the summer when you're super busy. I said, yeah, if you look at it, if per, per job, your percentage of profit can go way down because if your technicians or uh, your service experts are going out and they're running as fast as they can and not providing options, they're not doing, you know, serving the client like they should be. And they're just gas and going and hoping for the best or just pop that capacitor in there and run. Um, then your profits are going to go through the ground and your windshield time, like you can't make money doing windshield time. So uh, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. it's, it's horror. It's, we're all guilty of doing it at some point in our career, if you've been doing it long enough. Um, but it's definitely something that is, uh, is not good for your business. Yeah, it is. It is truly a tragedy when companies are just churning and burning, trying to do as many calls during the daylight hours. Um, you know, my advice in the summertime is slow down, take some time, 
provide options and doggone it, hydrate. <laughs> um, it's hot out there. Um, you know, you know and, and I really see an interesting shift right now, and, and this is definitely off the subject, but you know, with supply chain issues and prices up and you know, supply and demand and a lack of technicians, <clears throat> you know, maybe it's time for us to step back and, and look at what we charge for the level of service we provide. Um, we provide and we are considered essential, but we provide a service that your homeowner not only just wants, but they have to have. I mean, it is truly sometimes a life and death situation. Uh, indoor air quality, think about that. Jesus, oh, Pete, we just went through an entire pandemic, you know, that's a respiratory, you know, concern. Um, but if you're not spending that time and you walk in and you just slap on a capacitor, and you miss the opportunity of airflow or other concerns, you missed an opportunity to connect. And next time that customer needs you, do you think they're really going to remember right. you? Did you make an impression, a good impression, you know, mm -hmm. when you're out there? Yeah. What would you say yeah. to someone right now as a CSR and uh, say we had to increase pricing on refrigerant? I mean, it's just something that, it's just happening right now. Everything is is doubling and tripling in price in some some things. Uh, what? How do you, or do you deal with price objections whenever you're training a CSR? Absolutely. I, I always believe that you know we need to talk about the snuggie before I give you the price. Um, and I know some of your listeners out there are going the snuggie. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Someone out there owns a snuggie. But my thing is to connect with them first, build the value first. We'll get to the price later because it's not always about the price. But to me, I'm, I'm building the value <clears throat> about our organization. I'm building value about me as, as the person you've called into, you know, as a human being. I'm building value about our service professionals. They're not just technicians, right? They're not just parts changers. But our folks are service professionals. They're trained, man. They're going to come out. They're going to look at the scope of the work. They're going to provide you options, you know, solutions, some really key words. So I really think right now you have to focus a lot about the value. Um, what is going to make you so different from everybody else? You know, and really, ultimately, that's the question you're asking. Why should they use my company over someone else? And if it's just price, well, at that point, you've missed mm -hmm. out. Um, it, it, it's tough to compete on price. To me, it's easier to compete on the experience. Uh, so, so maybe you talk about third-party reviews. Maybe you talk about you know, some awards, uh, it, you know, things of that sort. But to me, it's really important to be building value, especially of our company and our service professionals that are going to come out and serve you today. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my goal is to get you up and running as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, two hot commodities to me, Tersh, with homeowners is always time and money. You know, we only have so much time and we only have limited resources. So my goal is if I can save you time and money, because I know how important that is, because I'm going to send you the right tech for the right job. I'm going to make sure that they're going to have the proper stock vehicle for most common issues. Um, my goal is to get you up and running because all I want to do, Tersh, is I want to get you back to your life so you can get back on your Netflix to figure out, did Carol Baskin kill her husband or not? I don't know, but I want you to find out. That's my goal. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what would you say if, if our company was in a rebuild stage? So say we purchased a company and that business, <laughs> they really don't have a great client experience reputation or I, to, to show third party uh, reviews would be a mistake. Um, it, you know, we've all, we've all kind of seen those companies out there. And then I've seen a trend where a couple of these companies are being purchased up and um, they're not even changing the name of them. And they just have a, a slew of one star reviews and now they're starting to get some more five stars, but they have a lot of bad history. Uh, what would you say? Like, how do you have that conversation? So you can't bring up, we have a great 
you know, uh, uh, A plus rating on BBB because uh, wow. we don't, we don't take me off of BBB <laughs> because we have a horrible rating or, you know, we have multiple one star, you know, Google at, uh, accounts that we don't even claim because people are just creating new accounts because we did such bad service in the past or whatever the case may be. Um, how do you have that conversation as a CSR? So, yeah, I, I firmly believe if you're rebranding or they've had some management changes and, and you're like, okay, it's, we're tired of the one star, or the three star, we're moving on to that. I, I believe that your homeowner is very savvy. And so I always believe in addressing the elephant in the room and being very transparent. You know what? In the past, our service wasn't the greatest. Matter of fact, a lot of people compared us to internet and cable companies. But I can assure you today, my number one goal is to outserve the competition. And the fact that you called in for this, I guarantee you, you're going to get a five-star service. I'm going to deliver you a five-star technician. And at the end of the call, they're going to ask, how was my service today? And I'm just going to be upfront with you. If you don't think it's five-star, you can walk away. Don't have to worry about paying at all. I don't know if I'd go quite that far, but I, I would be very transparent of what our past was. Um, it reminds me of the day when um, Avis used to say, hey, we're number two, but we're fighting for number one. That was years ago. And Hertz was always number one back in the day. Um, and Avis just owned it. They said, you know what? We're number two, but we're always fighting to be number one. Yep. Um, and if you will give us this opportunity to serve you, I guarantee it'll be the best decision moving forward. Uh, don't judge us based off of our past. Judge us based off of what you're going to experience today. Um, so to me, I always believe in being brutally honest, transparent. It's the same thing if I made a mistake out on the field. I'm not going to hide something. And you know what? We accidentally did this or this took place, you know, but don't worry. We're going to get you taken care of. Accidents happen. If you leak oil in a driveway or drive over someone's begonias and just pretend like nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's way one worse than just coming out and saying, Hey, I, I did it. I own it. I'm going to get it taken care of for you. Own it. Own it. Yeah. We've Always. had some incidences where we've like uh, stepped through ceilings and then we've, we haven't thankfully leaked oil on the concrete. Uh, knock on wood. Uh, that's one of my f major fears, but it's also like whenever our technicians are our service experts out in the field, they know they have to park in the street, not only for that factor. Um, all of our vehicles are brand new, but you can still have a leak in it. Um, but it's also intentional because people then have to kind of move out of the way. Uh, so they don't hit your van and they see your logo. So it's kind of a twofold thing for me. Uh, and also whenever somebody looks out there, house front door they look out the door to see you're coming up they see your van behind you and that, that sense of security as well but um i've always had that fear of having to go pressure wash a driveway because some uh, technician has has leaked oil somewhere or vacuum pump oil has dripped on oh yeah uh, that and that stuff just that and spray foam just does not want to come out of concrete but no no it does not uh yeah, I love just taking ownership. Hey, just to let you know this happened, you know, don't worry. We're going to take care We've of it. We've gotten some five-star uh, reviews from people where they were like, we just expected that they were just going to walk away and force our insurance company to to pay for this repair. And they owned it and they they fixed it. They took care of it. And, and you know, we got some five-star reviews out of that. Yeah, that, and really, that's what your customer wants. They want you to take responsibility. They want you to, um, you know, have respect for their home. Uh, and really, so that's how you win more moments, uh, by being real. Uh, you know, again, save them time, money, make it easy for them. You but feel, yeah, you feel like a front, CSR could realistically have that conversation? Um, or do you think at that point an owner or manager needs to come in during that rebuild process. Do you think, because for me, like whenever Julie, my wife, she is, if she's answering the phones, boom, 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 we're hitting all the power cell improved, like yeah. we're hitting it all. Yeah. Um, and then our CSR gets on the phone and it's like, there's a lot of pauses. And then we have, you know, 
we had these area, other areas that need some work in. And part of me believes that uh, an owner is always going to have an owner's mentality, ownership mentality. And mm -hmm. there's no amount of training that can, can do that. Uh, and then other times I, I witnessed our CSR just, just flat out killing it. So it, do you believe that to be the case? Do you believe that you can ever instill owner, like true ownership mentality or thought processes into a, an hourly paid employee? Uh, you know, you're kind of getting into, you know, what does an engaged employee look like, or is this just a job? And so I agree, an owner, owner's wife is always going to book more calls, they're going to always, they have a vested interest, right? That's their livelihood. An hourly employee, um, you have to start to shift from what is it going to do to me more than just a job, which is, you know, is there some profit sharing? Do they have goals? Um, are there some clear expectations with same thing we would do with technicians on, on KPIs of, you know, how many calls, if you take, we get 50 calls today, what do I expect your booking ratio to be? Uh, and then how can I help you achieve that? You know, how many service agreements do I expect you to sell over the phone if you guys mm -hmm. do that? Um, so I, I think it's just giving that person a path of success to help them take some of that ownership you know, with some clear expectations. Um, you know, if, if I'm just paid by the hour and I have no vested interest, then the next time I get offered another job for an extra buck 50 an hour, I'm out of there, man. Um, so you, my belief is you reward the behavior you want. So if you want them to book more calls, then not only do you have to train them, coach them, listen to calls, but when they do get that wow call or when they take care of that customer, that needs to be a win. You know, it's the same thing when you get a review. That's a win. It goes up on the wall of fame. It goes on a, you know, a little internal tweet with our team. I mean, that is a big deal. So it's the same thing with the CSR is give them a plan. Help them create success. Um, most CSRs, I, I, can't, I don't know this for a fact, but most of them probably did not as a kid think to themselves, man, when I grow up one day, I want to be a CSR. Well, okay. I'll tell you, that was Certain definitely things. whenever I grad, when I, when I dressed up at Halloween, I had the headset <laughs> on and it was, it, that's, that was my target in life. Truly it, it, to be a CSR. So. Uh, and look at you today, Tersh, man. You're like a rock star, dude. <laughs> I, yeah, now I got a microphone. So <laughs> there you go. You got a microphone. <laughs> So it, it, if, and I'm not saying that's a bad job. I'm just saying circumstances sometimes is I just, this is a job I got to support my family, but an engaged employee is someone that starts to have a purpose. And so I think intentionally we have to, and we give technicians a purpose and we give them goals and we have them jump through hoops and they get all sorts of stuff rewarded. Dude, the CSR, man, that is your yeah, voice. That's the face oh, of the company. Taking care of them. How about I feel, okay, if you do this, what would you, so I used to do this, Tersh. I used to say, all right, for every review or for all of this, I'll give you this. And I think back in those days, I was given like a five-day Subway gift oh, cards. Someone would do something great and I'd be like, hey, here's $5, eat fresh. And they're like, not so <laughs> fresh. So I started asking, what do you want? And our CSRs would tell me, well, you know, it'd be nice if uh, if we had lunch brought in once a month. OK, great. What does it take for that? If you achieve this, then you could get that. We got to the point where we were doing mani pedis. We had people coming in doing uh, their their toenails and fingernails on yeah. time. Um, we had contests that we had someone would come to their home and clean their yeah. house once a month. When I figured out what is it you really want, man, they would jump through a hoop. Like if we had a day that we called a red day, which means we don't have enough mm -hmm. calls. And so I'd get up there and I'd be like, okay, if y'all can book, you know, 50 service agreement calls for this week, by the end of the day, I'll give everybody a hundred bucks cash. Dude, Tersh, within an hour and a half, it was booked. They're like, show me the money. <laughs> so what I guess I was going to ask you, but it sounds like you, you believe in it, but I'll ask anyways, uh, for those who are, are listening, um, 
should we spiff or commission our CSR? Because I've, I've heard, I've heard lots of different things. I've heard, uh, yes, like spiff them certain things, uh, especially I love the, the fact that the, the mobile Manny Petty, uh, we have, we actually have a mobile masseuse that works for us. Um, and every time we change out a system, we, the, she goes out and gives a, um, a massage to the homeowners um, as part of our wow package, but we haven't brought that internal. Uh, but I've also heard you never commission or spiff any office staff. Bless your- um, well, I mean, why would we not? Yeah. I mean, it, 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 if you have a purpose and you want to reward the behavior that you're looking yeah. for, you know, my belief is if you invest in your people and take care of them, what I call the employee experience, most of the time they will deliver the customer experience you want. And, and so I just kind of make a little bit of a shift in, and I'm all good for the wow to wow the customer. Yeah. I want to wow my employees. I want to wow my team members because when you do that, all of a sudden, you do get that Chick-fil-A experience where they're saying, oh my goodness, my pleasure. Yeah. You know, I mean, so, so yeah, I, I think you have to get creative um, because it's not as simple as uh, truthfully, it, before I started with power selling pros, I did not spiff or reward them. I just basically said, look, answer the phone, book the call. That's your job. Right. Um, and, and that didn't work out too well. So I mean, that's, it, it, it takes it from, the someone's offering me 50 cents or a dollar more to go do it be a csr over here and it takes that part out of the equation especially if you can somehow incorporate the uh profit sharing if that's what you want to do profit if you want to incorporate something like that like look you're going to lose profit sharing you go over there um i'm just thinking like these exactly what you said reward the behavior that you want and that's something for me, for years, I just, I I struggle with that. It's like, look, man, this is your job. You're getting paid to do your job. Just go do your job. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, I understand. You know, I have to stand out above. You, you made a great point. It's all fine and dandy to do this for our clients, but what you don't think about, and I'm very guilty of thinking of, of missing this boat as well is the fact that your team is your first client. You know, and, and so yeah. we have to wow all of our clients, including the first client that we have, which is our team. Uh, and so, yeah, that's something that it, it, it's something that we've done in the past, but we kind of dropped off. And then it, it's I feel like most business owners or managers and anybody that's listening to this, that if they're in the HVAC industry or the plumbing industry, electrical industry, they know how it gets during the summer. And it gets very, very busy. And a lot of things that weren't like beat into our heads, like this is our culture. This is where it can drop off the boat is when you get busy. And um, so you have to be very intentional during this time of year, especially during the summer. Yeah, you, you definitely have to, um, you know, I, I worked with a company in the, out of Midland, Texas, out in the West Texas area, and they were trying to build up their uh, preventive maintenance. Uh, and so they started to have the office. And so we set some expectations. You know, this is what we expect your minimum that you can offer or sell over the phone. They happen to sell them over the phone. And I said, okay, so this is what I expect your minimum to be. Is it possible that you could sell an extra two a week, whatever the case was, right? So we came up with a plan and we came up with some clear goals. And now, not only individually, but also as a team, if they could achieve that, what would they win? Um, And and they hit it. Like every month I get an email and they're like, they're hitting it every single time. But it's something fun that they like to do. So it's fun competition. Um, So so a couple of things that I would talk about. Against each other? Are they part in team? Yeah. Okay. so they, they actually did it. Uh, you see, so you had an individual goal and then they had a team goal. So the idea was individually, if you met this, you know, this benchmark, you would get a special little spiff. If the whole team did it, then the whole team got this really nice special mm-hmm. gift. 
And what it did is if someone was struggling and they were having a tough time hitting it, other team members would come in and say, hey, let me help you. Or, hey, I noticed you were asking this question. How about we try it this way? You know, hey, by the way, Mr. Church, would you like to know how to save 15% off of today's repair? Whatever the case, right? So then they started getting creative and asking better questions. Um, and, and so, but again, they were trying to build up their service agreements. Um, I, I, I went back the, about a year I later. I know there's a lot of people that are listening to this and, mm -hmm. that they may only have one CSR. So it's, it's, it's kind of difficult <laughs> to have that competition or that, yeah. you know, bouncing ideas off of each other. I mean, obviously reaching out to you and your team, you know, that is, um, is, is one way to, to really leverage uh, coaching and, and everything. Is there something else like, cause it's, you don't, it's like, like you said earlier, you don't know what you don't know until you know. And it's one of those things where you're like, dang, I didn't realize how bad I sounded until you, you get good. Like and when I listen to like my first, second, third episode, I'm like, wow, I sounded horrible. <laughs> you know, even though it was over edited, I could, I still was, was horrible. And so now it's, it's like, I didn't know how to fill that time with this, you know, talking with this. And, and so what would you say someone like that could do in, in the meantime, until they got to 10 CSRs? True, true. So maybe you got one CSR, maybe one, one and a half, depending on the mm -hmm. season. You know, my belief is what gets measured gets managed. And so, again, when someone comes in and they're answering phones, it's an hourly position, you know, spend some time with them. You know, where do they need some training? Are you having, are you specifically setting time aside to listen to calls? You know, maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes a month. Let's listen to some calls. Let's make some adjustments. Um, and then sitting down with them of, you know, what does success look like to you? How can I help you achieve okay. that? That goes back um, to learning their why and, and that we talked about yeah. at the beginning of the show. So, yeah. so let me ask you a couple of like um, just spitball answers, spitfire answers yeah. or questions. And, um, you know, it may be a situation to where you can't answer it because it's, it like depends. Um, what, how long should a, a call last? Would a CF, CSR is taking a call? What, what, what would you say the average call? How long do you think it should last? Uh, this is always one of those money <laughs> questions. I, I'm going to say for an existing customer, believe it or not, about two to three minutes. It's not a whole right. lot. Um, it's one of your clients. They're just calling in. They need help. Get on, get off. A new customer is going to take a little bit more time. <clears throat> And, and I would say that could be seven minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I, my thing is I always teach a skill of redirect. So if you have a customer that's going down the, the path of, well, I've done this, I've done this, I went shopping at Macy's and blah, blah, blah. Dude, you need to redirect. Yeah. It's time to go, okay, so tell me one more time the air conditioning is doing this. The only exception I have is when I get a customer that is truly sharing a painful moment, maybe they're spouse has passed away and, and they used to take care of the mm -hmm. system. I'm going to be a little bit more open to spending some time. Take note of that um, too, because that means world yeah. to a client when a service asks huge. about it. Huge. And, and, and put those notes in, yep. the, in, the, in your CRM. If you hear a dog in the background and you go, oh my goodness, Tersh, what is your fur baby's name? Oh, write that down. Yeah. My little dog's name is Mia. Oh my goodness. So now when that technician, your service experts gets to the door and goes, Oh, is that little yes. Mia? Dude, you just won my exactly. heart. <laughs> exactly. Gold, right? Um, Anybody's not so, listening to anything yeah. else on this show. Yeah. Like yeah. that is the gold, golden nugget there. Yeah. yeah. Get the dog. <laughs> <in it. laughs> All right. So what is the, uh, the closing percentage uh, for maintenance conversion? So, um, what would you say the golden percentage number is that they should be um, closing out tickets? As far as starting, um, you, you mean selling a new maintenance on a yeah. phone? I, I would think uh, it could be done at 60%. Um, it, and it's really, once you address the pain, 
and, and you've become the hero, that's when you have an opportunity to introduce that. Do you ever go you know, into, with, with you what, ever go, sorry to cut you off. I, I have ADD uh, and I, it is like, it's coming out at, uh, so here, do you ever have a situation where you're, you're actually, um, coaching the CSR and you're like, man, he's killing it. She's killing it. Like, but like, they're just not closing the conversion. Like they're not converting. Uh, let's look at this, the, uh, the maintenance agreement. Like, let's see what we're not being, what we're not offering in this maintenance agreement. Is there a price point where this is too high? Do you ever have that conversation with a business owner as power selling pros? Hmm. All the time. And, and one way I, I say is, look, everybody has features, right? You have all these lists of features. Well, every company right. does. So I teach them, don't talk about the features. Talk about the benefits. Like, for instance, don't sell me the airplane. Sell me the destination. Don't say we're going to get on this metal plane. We're going to go 500 miles an hour. You're going to be crunched in with all these people. No, tell me we're going to Cabo and it's all inclusive top shelf drinks, yeah. baby. Sell me what's in it for me. But the way to do that is you got to listen. What's important to a homeowner? You know, if you hear kids in the background or time is important, then you know what? One of the great things about, you know, our club membership or whatever the case is, is, you know, you get 24 hour service or you never have to pay for overtime. Or, so it's always sharing what's in it for mm -hmm. me. Don't just go, oh, like, a you know, well, we give you this, 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 this. I don't yeah. want that. I don't want an agreement. I don't want a contract, right? I don't want fees. So we talk about being careful with the words we choose. And then what are you selling? What is the real benefit? Not just the feature, you know, but the real benefit. Sell me that destination, not just the airport. So if they, if they do that, if they kill it with that aspect of it, they're selling the destination and not the features. Um, do you feel like price point is less of an objection? If, if you're doing it, if you're offering a monthly, you know, you subscription, like offering monthly is the best choice. Oh, it's to me, it's the only way to go right now. Everyone lives in a subscription world. Gotcha. Netflix, Apple TV, Disney TV, car payments. Do you feel like everybody's burned <laughs> out by subscriptions? Do you ever What's feel that? like some, like, I'm just over it. Another subscription. Here's another subscription, you know. Well, I mean, you, your largest investment is your heating and air system yeah. at your home. Uses the most amount of yeah. energy. Don't you think it makes sense to protect that investment? Okay. I mean, you do it for your car. You have auto insurance. You do it for your home. You do it for your health, your life. But that, so, so to me, it's really simple. That's the most expensive appliance. Yeah. So for a small amount every month to let us be proactive and take care of it, it's one more thing that comes off your plate. Hundred percent, I agree. Cool, Steven. Where can we oh. where can we learn more about you and Power Sale and Pros? Oh man, Tersh, you're the best. Um, you know, the best bet is you can go to our website, powersellingpros.com. Um, we offer a lot of coaching opportunities. There's some free videos. There's a lot of free downloads. I will give you all the scripts you need. I'll even give you the videos on how to do it. I will set you up that you can actually do this on your own. Now, for any reason, you're like, I don't want this on my plate. That's where we come in and we can do the training and the coaching for you. Uh, we'll listen to your calls. We'll play the calls. We'll coach off of those calls. Uh, my goal is that you're booking at least 85% of your calls. You're selling agreements over the phone. Uh, you're, you're winning more moments. Um, so really, it's setting up that CSR for success with the tools and the training they need um, so that you're not just spinning your wheels trying to get more leads, but you're taking care of the leads that you do have. So powersellingpros.com, we got you. It sucks when you have that bucket. You, you, the bucket – analogy where you're constantly filling this bucket, but you don't realize there's all these holes in the bottom of your bucket. And one of those holes could be your CSR, not, not converting those leads. So you're, you're getting the leads as, as fast as possible. Uh, and then they're not converting them over to a, a system, a, a sale. Yeah. And what a great analogy, because that hole could be really big. 
It could be massive. It could be a lot of them, you know. And in the summertime when you've got a PPC that's costing quite a bit of money, dude, everything's on the line. When the phone rings, everything's on the line. Pick me up. Yeah. Pick me up. I make you money. Mm -hmm. Cool, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing everything with us. and, And I look forward to talking to you some more. Yeah, I'm, my pleasure, Church. Thank you very much, Service Business Mastery. You guys are amazing, and thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. If anybody has any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to Stephen. His his team over at Power Selling Pros, uh, go, I added a link to the show notes, uh, powersellingpros.com. And uh, get you, I mean, if nothing else, go get you, download some free resources and uh, and start using them, start implementing them. I can tell you firsthand that they work. Uh, there's certain things that I was a not believer before using it and then started using it. And it's like, Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's completely different. Like I, I wouldn't have thought to do that on my own. I, it's, it, and yes, it did feel awkward to start with, but now it's like, it's so, so much of a natural habit yeah. that we're getting five-star reviews when clients are calling in and they're calling for someone else, uh, but they accidentally got our number uh, and they're still giving us five star reviews. And so that's just something that happens only because you have constant training. So well, with that being said, uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you again, Stephen, for coming on the show. You bet. Stay safe. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Absolutely. See ya.